Very excited for this conversation. Leo, Itai, welcome. Tell us a little bit about your background and how Weavey got started. I've spent the last 15 years in uh, tech building uh, businesses and, and, and products for uh, mostly for creatives, and then I was responsible for the entire seller side of uh, Fiverr. So I've been uh, in the post-production industry for the last 25 years, mainly as a video compositor. But in the last 10 years or so, I've been uh, mainly a creative director. Yeah, it was three years ago, uh, we got an early access to, I think it was DALI, and I started playing around with AI, and you know, as everyone was, I was totally shocked, blown away. No matter how much we tried, we couldn't make it something that we used in our pipeline. That's where we set out to build like a tool that would bring all the tools, all the control that I used to have in my old industry, but to this newborn industry. And so, yeah, tell me a little bit about like, how did you guys come up with, with this approach for Weavey? I mean, most of my job was, uh, was working with node-based softwares. It is my natural go-to place. And I think the entire state of mind using nodes is a bit different than uh, generating or producing one-offs. Um, and that's what we wanted to bring inside um, this AI territory. Uh, it ties in Jonathan's experience working with uh, Node-based and then also uh, getting some inspiration from like seeing what uh, uh, ConfUI could deliver already like two years ago, uh, really bringing forward the, the, the level of control and, and scale that you could do with uh, generative media. But then at the same time, like uh, not really being built for uh, for creatives. And so it, it was clear to us that there is that this huge gap between what the technology is able Able to do and what teams are able to achieve with this technology uh, can be bridged if we build something that's both robust and has all of the creative tools uh, built into it. You know, we've been working together for a little while and it's like, you know, and Weavey is, it does so many things. So how, how do you like succinctly describe, like, what's Weavey? So Weavey is an AI-powered image and video editing platform built for professional designers, post-production, um, uh, game developers uh, to, to gain both control and scale over everything they're building. Do you guys have a sense already as to like today, who, who should be like most jumping into Weavy head first? So what we've been seeing is that the people who are most excited about Weavy are the people that really care about their craft, that want to be at the, at, at the cutting edge of, of what's possible today. So you're, you're saying people who have, who have played with some of these newer tools and they just want more control over the final output. And, and they're, they're willing to, to experiment with new things. They're willing to, 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 to go through steeper learning curves because they understand that this is what it takes to, to do things that uh, the technology now enables, but to, to still keep their uh, creative standards in place. Show, don't tell. Shall we dive into this thing? So I'll, I'm sharing my screen. So the first thing that our users are doing is pulling out a prompt node. This prompt node holds text to describe the image. This one is suitable. It's a, it's a hipster Sisyphus. Lime Dot's overall suit is pushing a huge rock up a hill. So I'm plugging it into one of the many AI models we have. Let's go for Google Fast, and it will soon generate an image for us. So that is the real simple building blocks, yes? A prompt node and an AI model node. Let's check out what's the most common use case in Weavey. Every new user just comes in and starts with a, with a prompt connected to all of the major AI models available. So uh, GPT and Flux and Minimax, Recraft, Luma, Google, Ideogram. These models, they're just yeah. coming out all the time. And one mm -hmm. thing I struggle with is like, which model should I even use? So you're saying what, one of the problems that this could solve is just like, yes, let's look at which model is best for what you're trying to do. Exactly. That's what I'm doing. I mean, I don't usually know which one will be best for my project. So I'm starting out with just image generating by all of them. So in this case, I've selected Minimax, which was the best one, most realistic one. And then I'm taking it further and connecting it to all major video models to get a lot of video results and check out which, which of them would best suit my well, what that Wait, what was the prompt? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not expect an octopus. So yeah, we have and a- Valley back rotating, an octopus alien. Uh, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> classic, <laughs> classic, classic need. monster thing in space. We can, get, we can see that the, the results vary. Yeah, big that, time. that's interesting. big time. Yeah, Minimax is going super wild. Uh, I think that's, that's a great first step for any project. 
So let's say I want that video, and then I can just export straight out of Weavey, yeah? Yeah, sure. You can download it, or you can add an export node and um, use it wherever you want. You could potentially also like uh, continue that, like take out a frame from within that and start a, a shot from another angle. Exactly. Or, like you, you can you can do whatever you. Want. So, like, yeah, I so. mean, you can extract a video frame, choose the specific frame you want, and then run it to another um, model and see what you get. I mean, if you want to close up, you can crop inside this, upscale, and then render another uh, close up for the, for the alien, for example. And it's a new way of working, right? Because you might have a general idea of, I want to I wanna start at point A and get to point C, but maybe I'm going to let this tool guide a little bit of the creative process along with me. Basically, you have so many different options. Like you could start with a, a fine-tuned model over uh, one of the characters in this, that, that could be the octopus or the mm -hmm. person. Uh, and, and then you could create also like different uh, uh, videos from scratch with this like fine-tuned model. So a lot of different techniques to start uh, building your own story. And th this is another reason why I, I really gravitated towards this tool is because, you know, you have a choice of nine or a choice of five, and it really is the, the person who's making the select, like, oh, that's the aesthetic I want to push into and go further on, or that's the shot where I'm starting to see something great here. Let's do more of that. Uh, and that, that's where the, the professional will get output that is just going to be head and shoulders above someone who's just coming in with, without a lot of that knowledge. So I, I think that's definitely one part of it. Uh, I think that the other part is about how do you use this tool in a very smart fashion uh, to get to the result that you want. Uh, why don't we jump into the next uh, Yeah, please, let's go. Let's go. So the next one is a bit more complex, but I think uh, exemplifies power of manual working a bit, a, bit, a bit more. So in this workflow, maybe I should start with the end. The end result is, an, again, a shot with a title of this giraffe and these two guys on the balcony petting the giraffe with the, the title, the end, which kind of stands between them, in front of the giraffe and behind the people. The person who did this workflow knew exactly where he was going. I mean, maybe not exactly in terms of style, specific style, but he knew what, what would be the components of his uh, end shot. I mean, probably generated a few options. This is just clear sky. This is the one they liked. Yeah. This is the one they liked and generated the giraffe. Again, from, chose it from a few options. This one I see had 33 variations before he nailed down the right one, changing something in the prompt, getting a different until uh, this one was right. Gotcha. Popping it into a mask extractor to generate a uh, mask. So automatically you can uh, segmentize the image and select parts of the image you want to um, uh, separate. Overall, we look at it as a tool for professionals. And so uh, we are encouraging uh, our, our users to, to spend time in learning what's possible, to explore workflows, to see tutorials. Uh, and, and, and the learning curve does bring them to be able to do uh, so much more than they could do with like the simple black box, uh, uh, no learning curve tools that are so popular today. And so, okay, so let's look at that compositor. So we're, we're taking the background, we're taking the giraffe, we're taking and, the people. And adding the text, the text to the title, which says the end. Inside the compositor, you can choose the font, the weight, the style, the size, the spacing, and the color. And I can move my background as much as I want, rotate it, move the text around. I like the idea that it's behind the, the giraffe, makes it the frame interesting I think I love the result actually of the color here amazing thing here is you can see the final shot uh -huh. and you can be like well actually you know giraffe feels like pretty unnatural maybe it should be a dinosaur exactly and you can just redo it with the dinosaur and it's not something where you have to you're like well oh, now I have to like figure out how all this thing is gonna that together. is really part of the benefits of using node based the rest of the workflow remains intact while you change the giraffe to anything else the rest of the shot will not change at all. So uh, I think that's, this is really a part of the strength that the node based So works. cool. Let's take a look at um, something like that- Brand really, marketing. I really like this workflow because um, it's a good example for building something that could be used again and again in a simple way. I start by breaking down the prompt to style, colors, and element. These are the inputs that I want yeah. to provide. Yeah, that I want anyone to have control over. The rest of the workflow I don't want anyone to uh, mess with. The only constraint that I'm, I'm showing here is just the logo, uh, the logo itself. I mean, yeah. I'm not uh, adding any more of the brand, just, be, just to make it simple to understand. 
yeah. you could potentially add a lot more details to it. So we've broken down the prompt to style, colors, and elements, concatenating it, enhancing it to generate, automatically generate a prompt suitable for an AI model to understand. And then using this um, logo as a constraint, I'm generating different variations of my own logo uh, over here. You can transfer automatically from this type of workflow to this app view, which just shows you the uh, things that I've chosen to show you. Um, so if I'm a brand designer, I could uh, potentially give this to my client or maybe my colleagues, and they could edit what they want to, to yeah. generate yeah. just by my constraints, just the colors, just the element, and just the style. So like for now, for example, I locked the, the logo and locked the, uh, uh, the colors, uh, and, and now you only have control over the style and the uh, element. This example, I think, is just an elaboration. So it, it's here to show the power of the, the app mode. So the end result is like three different angles of the same model wearing the same clothes on the same background. Okay, so that's the end result. The, the reason that uh, the person uh, that built it uh, has built it was uh, in order to create characters for different purposes, like for uh, 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 banners and stuff like that. So it, it wasn't actually about the clothing or what they wear. It was just about like compositing uh, new scenes and how you create uh, the right uh, uh, characters in these scenes. And the prompt here is broken down into gender, age, ethnicity, body type, clothing, style, etc. And we always keep like some of the aspects of the prompt static. Yeah. yeah. So it's always realistic photograph, always three views in a vertical grid and always on a light gray background. So it's generating these three views in one go. We're going through cropping of, of the different, each of the images, upscaling it using topaz and adding some details using flux. But the interesting part again is going to the uh, app view of this thing. And over here, you could potentially just change the gender, but getting a lot of variation inside the uh, changes you've made. People are watching this and they're probably like, oh, I want to get in this thing. How, do, how does someone like get access to EV? How should designers be approaching this? If I'm a designer, I think I want to start using this within my team. How would you recommend they do that? Yeah, so weavy.ai, uh, you, uh, you can go in, uh, you get uh, a free 150 credits. Uh, uh, you can invite your other team members. Uh, and then you can do monthly subscriptions to try things around. You don't need to generate 1,000 times to get to a single shot that you're happy about. Uh, you have that much control that uh, in many cases you can do it with like uh, three trials uh, until you get to the thing that you want. So we're also pretty happy to do workshops for teams to help them on board. Uh, so uh, uh, people who are watching this can uh, feel free to just reach out to us and we're happy to uh, help anybody, any, anyone get on board uh, on Weavy and uh, start uh, uh, working. Talk to me about like where, where do you where do you want to take Weavy over the long term and where do you see the design profession going? So uh, I think that the, the design as a profession is is is, is uh, going through major changes. Like things that used to take a lot of uh, effort and, and and technical skill uh, can now be done uh, maybe with a single click sometimes, uh, and and this will only get better or worse depends uh, how you look at it. But then on the other hand, you have like this crazy possibilities because when someone is able to build that kind of uh, uh, machines, that kind of design systems, then their impact is getting so much bigger. Like you can think about uh, building these design systems that serves the entire organization in creating visuals or, or serving real-time products in creating uh, worlds that are controlled. You're now able to create uh, systems that can uh, generate uh, entire worlds. Uh, and I think that's, that's where we're uh, aiming to, to give professionals the tools that make them uh, so much more impactful. Uh, so it just, they just need to make sure they're not left behind uh, using the same techniques uh, when technology has uh, changed. And all, I think all they have to do is not work harder or longer. Uh, they just have to work smarter. And Weavy is part of the new tools that uh, enable them to do that. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate you doing that. I'm excited to see what people do on it. Uh, and we're very excited to see, to see what happens. So thank you for your time. Thank you for walking us through it. Thanks, Ben. ben that was so much fun. Yeah, it was beautiful. Thank you, man.